All right, ladies and gentlemen, hello, 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 and welcome to tonight's webinar, uh, How to Hire Your Children Correctly. We're going to stop giving them allowances today. Uh, do me a huge favor, type in the chat where you're from, who invited you out tonight. We apologize for the late start. You won't get to see this lovely face because part of the issue is I updated my computer and now I can't get my camera to work. So it's going to be Yvette's lovely smile all night and just my picture. So again, go ahead and type in the chat where you're from. And um, if you have children that work in your business uh, or have you not already. In fact, let me throw up the poll for tonight. See, I'm just all thrown off uh, tonight. So um, let's throw up the poll tonight. You just go ahead and type in the uh, chat, though, where you are from. And if you will, go ahead and answer tonight's poll question. And we're going to be getting ready to get started here in a second. I know we're starting late, but I want to give another couple minutes for the latecomers to come on and join the room. It's super, super excited to have you guys uh, learn from uh, one of my mentors when it comes to uh, taxes and, and business structure and all of that good stuff. So now you guys get to learn from somebody that I greatly respect and admire and get to learn from as well so we'll leave the um we will leave the uh poll up for a couple minutes uh welcome 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 looks like we have uh angela double a alexander in the building uh sheila is also in the building uh looks like the is in the building as well sandra is on board nice 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 uh, mojo the tech boss lady is on deck so we are Super, super excited to have you guys all come and learn uh, what we want to present to you tonight. If you have a business, Aloy Copley is in the building, and you are not oh, employing your hey. you are leaving up to $6,350 on the table per child. Uh, so Sandra is out of the ATL, uh, Mojo mm -hmm. is out of the beat, but uh, in Atlanta, which is <laughs> cool, cool, cool. BX uh, in the building. Well, Skipper is in the building as well. Good deal, good deal, good deal. So give us one more minute, guys. Go ahead and answer the poll question if you have not already. We've got some cool things that we want to give away for you guys attending. Uh, Yvette has got a killer presentation for you tonight to help you really understand at a fundamental level, not only that you should be paying your children to work in business, but how to do it properly how to do it correctly, how to make sure you're in full compliance with the IRS and get everything that you need, get all those ducks in a row, because this is a, a tax deduction that a lot of home-based business owners are missing. Uh, even brick and mortar businesses are missing it because they won't bring their child to the location and let them do a little work from time to time. Uh, but you could be leaving a lot of money on the table. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and let Miss Yvette get prepared to do her thing. Uh, if you guys have any questions, I'll be man in the chat. I'm going to jump out and let Miss Yvette take the wheel. And um, again, somebody I really respect and admire. She is uh, absolutely very knowledgeable, has all the information when it comes to accounting and proper business structure and how to set this stuff up and make sure that it is done right. Had the pleasure of knowing her for almost two years now. Uh, and it's just been a pleasure and a joy uh, learning from her and, and just, you know, having her be a part of our team. And now uh, I want to introduce her to you and maybe you will get her to be a part of your team. So, Miss Yvette, real quick, tell us who you are. Give us a little bit of the background. I, I, we don't have all night to go through all of your accolades, but give us a little bit of your background. Um, hey, everybody. How are you? I am Yvette D. Best, the People's Tax Accountant. Um, everyone knows that I love taxes. I love manipulating the IRS tax code to benefit us. Um, everyone knows that they should be operating as a business. And if you don't know, I'm telling you right now, you need to be operating as a business. Everyone knows that I also have the hashtag, which is the tax deductible lifestyle. And it's just basically everyone should be connecting their everyday activities to business activities. So basically what it is, is that you're living in your purpose, you're doing what you love, you're getting the money that you deserve, and it's basically your whole lifestyle is tax deductible. 
Um, if you do not know how to do that, of course, after the end of the night, we're going to find out how. But what you want to do is to make sure you want to be having a tax deductible lifestyle. You want to take bills and make them expenses. That is what the tax accountant says every day. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So uh, obviously you're on your own uh, tax firm. I've uh, been doing that for uh, a while and solid business and, and understanding that business coach, sought after speaker, see, and, and, and just everything, woman empowerment. Talk about real quick before we get into your presentation, the, the Project 3000 mission to take 3000 uh -huh. women from employees to bosses. What is that all about and how is that going for you guys? So yes. Project 3000, it is a project with me and my sister. If you do not know who my sister is, that is Monique Mojo Winley. Mojo's with a Z because people be sleeping. But <laughs> me and my sister are both empowered to take and take 3,000, 3,000 women and turn them from employees to bosses. Now, let me explain what that employee to bosses mean. It does not mean that you're going to immediately go out and quit your job and become a boss. You're going to basically take your time to make an exit strategy, use your job as your interest free financing and get into your purpose about what you really want to do. The job is supposed to be a resource, not the sole source of where you get money from. It's just a resource. So what you want to do is to tap into your talents, your abilities and make everything that you want in your life to happen, because it's really about us is really about building future black billionaires. Now, the reason why I say future black billionaires because I am already a millionaire. It may not be in my net worth, but it's in my mindset. So since I'm already a millionaire, of course, I'm gonna want my children to be billionaires. There's only, you wanna take and multiply. So right. since I am already a millionaire, I am raising future black billionaires. And with that, you just wanna continue to change your mindset because you become wealthy way before that money hits your pocket. Once you take and change the and go into a wealthy mindset, the rest will fall into place. And I'm a perfect example of that. Gotcha. All right. So now let's give the people what they came here for. And uh, I will let you take controls. Go ahead and get into your PowerPoint presentation and let them know not only why they should be uh, hiring their children in business, but how to do it correctly so that they're in compliance with the IRS and start making or saving money that would otherwise be going to Uncle Sam. Okay, now what I need to know is, can you see the first screen that says hiring your child the right way? Yes, we are with good the beautiful, to go. With the beautiful future black billionaire on there with his glasses and he is an accountant. <laughs> yes, I, I just had to go find me an accountant kid to put on the PowerPoint. Okay, so let's get into it. Hiring your child the right way. The first thing you want to do, you want to always with everything, there are rules. But first, before we start that, let's just say right now, it's 2017. Right now, you can be saving $6,350 by putting your child, which I use as the ages of 7 to 17, into your business. Now, you just can't take and start having your child working. There's rules that you have to follow because with everything, documentation is key to make sure that you always have yourself IRS compliant because, you know, I like to have you IRS compliant to make sure that if they have any questions about the money that you are deducting on your return, as far as paying your child, you have all your ducks in a row. So these are the rules that you first going to have to follow. You're going to make sure, one, that the work is actually done. Now, you're going to do that by having time sheets or just a summary of what the child did that week or that day and maybe even have on there how much you paid. Then the work has to be related to your business. Now, as a tax accountant, I have different things, filing, shredding, um, putting things away, handing out flyers. But you just don't want to say, OK, I have a business selling barbecue sauce, but I have my son um, on the corner washing cars. That's not going to work. You have to have the work related to your business. Then the child must be capable of doing the work. 
So again, you may not want to have a seven year old go back to the car wash. If you was a owner of a luxury, high detailing car wash and you had just seven year old detailing cars, that may not fly. That might be a better job suited for someone 12, 13, 14, 15. But there's always something else they could do, like putting out trash, um, clearing off, um, cleaning out the refrigerator. These are things that seven year olds can do that is related to the business. And the April are capable of doing that work. And then the amount paid for the work must be reasonable. So again, you only have $6,350 per year that you can give to your child that is will be exempt to them and they won't have to pay any payroll taxes. So usually I say the rule of thumb, you want to do like $125 a week, but you want to make sure that you're not giving them $125 a week, but they only working for an hour. You want to make sure that the time and the work that's being done and what you are paying are all reasonable. Then you must be careful and keep written records. So when I say written records, you're going to have a job description. You're going to have timesheets. You, I would even have the point where you fill out the timesheets and the, your child signs it and you sign it and just keep it documented. Um, we'll go a little further because we're going to talk about some of the tax compliance um, a little bit further in the presentation and how you're going to be able to document even after you have kept careful records. So next, you're going to have necessary paperwork. In all things, when the IRS are, is giving you tax breaks, they're going to want documentation and then they're going to always have you with paperwork. You're never going to be able to escape it. So you want to have a written employment agreement that way job description. And I would even give an offer letter, letting them know what the job was going to be when they're going to work. And then that way you have a written employment agreement that you sign as well as your child, even if the child is seven, because they already know how to do their signature. So you're going to go take and obtain a federal employment identification number. And that is just the tax ID, EIN, which you will already have. Now, the main thing you want to do is when you get this EIN, you want to make sure that you check the box that the tax liability you will have for the year is a thousand dollars or less. That's key because then you will only have to file um, for tax compliance purposes, the W-2 at the end of the year, instead of making quarterly payments, you will only have to pay one time at the end of the year. So please take note when you get your EIN, always take and check the box that says you want to be an annual filer. Then you will also go to your state and get a state employee identification number. That's just in case if you have any state issues or you want to report this income that you're paying to your child to the state, you can do so as well. Then you want to complete what is a called a I-9 form. That is just to comply with the fact that the child is a United States citizen or is eligible to work in the United States. That's to keep compliance with the immigration laws and to make sure, again, you have documentation intact. And then you will have each child that's in the business fill out a W-4 and they will check in the box number seven that the wages that they're receiving are exempt from payroll taxes, that they're not going to be liable for any tax because basically the standard deduction is $6,350. They're only going to be paid $6,350. So that makes it zero for tax liability. So next, we're going to talk about tax compliance. Now, for the tax compliance, you always want to keep time cards on file with the hours worked. I'm going to um, do a case study after this to show you a sample of a timesheet and things that you must keep on file the same way if you had other employees in your business, if unless you had a punch clock that they could punch in and out. Then you want to file quarterly federal withholding returns. Now, that is only if you did not elect 
to be an annual filer. So say some you had your EIN for a long time and you can't remember if you had elected to be an annual filer, then you will just file quarterly federal withholding returns. And then you will also file a state withholding report. And that's just saying, hey, I paid my child this amount of money this quarter and I'm just letting you know there is no payroll tax involved, but I'm putting, making you aware that I have paid out money wages the same way you do with regular employees that you're paying payroll taxes for. Then at the end of the year, you will file forms called W-2 and W-3. Now, the W-2 is something that almost everyone is familiar with because it's what you give employees. So with the W-3 is what the bosses file. We, when your employer has you, they give you a W-2 to let you know your wages. Um, if you had any things from like 401k or if you had um, flex spending or dependent care costs, that's all listed on your W-2. But the W-3 is a form that they file reporting to the IRS what wages they actually paid you and just to coincide with the fact that they're paying payroll taxes and they're staying in compliance with what the IRS um, has delineated to them for employees. Then last but not least, you will have to file an annual unemployment return. Now this is a return that is the tax you will pay on any wages that you pay to any, empl any employee that is subject to having unemployment. Now, your child, because their wages will be tax exempt, would probably would not be taxed on a federal unemployment return. But you want to file it anyway to stay in IRS compliance. So this is the way that you're going to be able to, as a boss, pay your child six thousand three hundred fifty dollars per year until well this for 2017 is going to be 6400 next year and then that way you can take and say all right i got all of this written off as wages my child doesn't have a tax return because this was equal to their standard deduction so it's zero liability for them and now you have taken allowances and made it into a tax write-off now I want to talk about some things that the kids can do once they have this money. So think about things like football fees, sporting equipment, playing flag football, taking karate classes. All of these things now become a tax deductible lifestyle because you're paying your child and your child is taking that money to pay for the things that they want to do. So with that being said, let's move to the case study. So the case study is about my son, Mr. Thomas Armstrong III, otherwise known as Trey. He's eight years old, he'll be nine in December, and for Best Services Unlimited, he is what we call the shredding specialist. He's in charge with emptying out the shredders in our office, and shred, we keep piles of paper maybe for the end of the day. And he shreds all of this documentation because we want to make sure that we're keeping everyone's ID in check. So this is his job. And for that job, he's paid um, $6,250 a year or $125 a week. So what I did was I made a job description. I just said, hey, he's a shredding specialist. He's a responsible for receiving and segregating and loading waste paper into the shredder. Um, he's a member of our team and that he adheres by the values, the practices and our standards of Best Services Unlimited. And then I talk about what his responsibilities are. And it's a little bit more because I talk about what type of skills he should have. So he has to have communication skills, the ability to lift 10 pounds, things that he's able to do to show that he is capable of doing the job. So then I have a copy of the I-9. I fill out the I-9 with his information. Um, 
I use his birth certificate and his social security card because of course he's eight years old. So he does not have a photo ID except from school, but that's not acceptable. So I fill out the form using his social security card and his birth certificate. And I just keep the form on file with a copy of his birth certificate and social security card for documentation purposes. Then he starts working and I have a template, which is, I have it in Excel, but I just put a picture of it here, which is a weekly employee timesheet, name all the days of the work of the week, what time he started, what time he finished, when he got a break, and the total hours for the week. And of course, at the bottom is his place for him to sign and the place for me to sign. And then I take and keep that in the file, in his employee file as well. Next, you have the W-4 form. Now, again, I circle here in red because part number seven is what you need to concentrate on because again, because you're only paying them $6,350, that is gonna be totally exempt from federal tax liability. So you're just gonna check, you're gonna fill in their name as it is in the top and check box number, take exempt, in box number seven, have your child sign it, you sign it, and put it into the um, file. Next, you have the Georgia W-4. So again, with the Georgia W form or your state W form, because I'm pretty sure there's other people on this line that's not from Georgia, every state should have a W-4. If not, just Google your state W-4 form, and then you will do the same thing with Georgia. You go to line number eight and state that the wages would be exempt from taxes and then you'll fill out the line exempt and check the box so next is the end of the year you're going to give your child a w-2 now in this example the w-2 has um social security and medicare wages but that will not be the case in your form. You will only have wages in box number one. There will be no federal withholding because again, those wages are exempt from tax withholding as well as social security and Medicare taxes because again, the amount is not over the standard deduction which will require them to file a return. So next is the W-3. Now this form is what you will complete and also transmit to the IRS. And it'll just have information about the wages that you pay and their information and you transmit that form which kicks out the W-2. And then last but not least, you have the 940 form. That is the federal unemployment tax return. That is also the form that you will fill out and send into the IRS. And again, that's just gonna have the wages that was paid. And again, with this form, you do not start paying federal unemployment tax until you have wages that are over 7,000, which if you can, I know the picture is kind of small, but it is on line number five of that form. And then what happens, there's like a little formula that they calculate and any wages that's over 7,000 is what they tax for federal unemployment. Now, I'll give you an example. Um, in my business, I paid myself $35,000 last year. And for my 940, my tax part was only like $42. So I can guarantee you that if you have paying your child and you fill out the form 940, you're not going to have any tax liability. So in summary, I want to say that paying your child for services performed in your business can reduce your overall tax bill. But you're doing that by shifting assets from your child without having any gift tax implications. Because most people know you can give money as a gift, but when it goes as a gift, it can be taxed too, depending on the amount. So as a business owner, you can take a deduction for the wages paid to your child. Again, six thousand three hundred and fifty dollars for 2017. And again, because the standard deduction is also six thousand three hundred and fifty dollars, it offsets the wages, which now makes that income tax free to your child. Now, I wanted to give an example. So let's take the example that you took the full amount of the wages, six thousand three hundred and fifty dollars 
and it would be fully deductible as compensation wages paid by the business. But there's also a tax savings to the business owner, which is two thousand two hundred and twenty six dollars. The way you get that is you take six thousand three hundred and fifty dollars and you times that by thirty five percent. And that's if you're I'm using thirty five percent because most business owners, I use the highest tax bracket and the highest tax bracket for this scenario is thirty five percent. Then the income tax to the child is zero because, again, the wages are offset by the standard deduction, which are both equal to six thousand three hundred and fifty dollars. I know y'all getting tired of hearing six thousand three hundred and fifty dollars, but I just want to put that in perspective of how much money you're actually losing by not having your child in your business. So to wrap it up, let's talk about tonight's giveaways. So one, just for coming to the webinar tonight, and I like to thank you for coming out. One, I'm gonna send you hiring your child the right way checklist. I'm gonna also send you a sample of a job description and a sample timesheet. And I'm trying to um, scan it into my PDF so you could be able to, tap, to type into the timesheet form so you won't have to write it all up. You could be able to type into the form. I will also send a copy of, um, of preliminary 2018 W-4 as well as a preliminary 2018 Georgia W-4 form. Now, I know for sure that the IRS W-4 is available, but if Georgia is not, I will send a 2017 version and you can use that for this year and then just update it next year to be ready. Um, Cortez. Are you ready to talk about the training or do you want me to do that? Well, I am uh, ready to talk about something. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because I've been uh, talking for a long time. <laughs> that was an amazing job. Very, very detailed uh, in what it is that you explained. And I love that because I've got to break all of that stuff down and really uh, get it implemented because I have three enterprises that my children work in so how would that work if you have multiple businesses do you just file a set of paperwork for each business entity yes yes but what i would try to do if i mean because the amount of money is not that big mm -hmm. i would just try to top load it into one business so if most of the stuff you do like you you're coaching a lot mm -hmm. i would put that six thousand three hundred and fifty dollars into the coaching part gotcha Gotcha. Because okay. the money is not really a lot to split over different businesses. Pretty mm -hmm. much you can, like I said, um, $6,350 per week is probably roughly about $122 a week, give okay. or take. So right. you could put all of that into one bucket. $122 is not a lot. You just pay them for one business instead of trying to put them to work yes. in all the businesses. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, Mojo says she has a question. If you guys have questions, go ahead, type questions in uh, and let's do about five minutes of Q&A. Does everybody understand what's going on? Uh, dorm supplies, dorm snacks, spending money. OMG, them girls have a bunch of expenses. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, for me, my sons play ball. Not only do they play ball, they want to be good. So they train. Uh, not only do they train, they go to a shooting coach, they go to, I mean, it, it gets crazy. Uh, so, yes, that, that is a good write off. Uh, uh, Freya says, did you say something about a W-3 form and the IRS will provide us a W-2 form? OK, so if you can go back, Yvette, through the W-3 and the W-2, sounds like there, there are some 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 missing pieces there for Freya. OK. So the W-3 and the W-4 are both filed by the business owner. Now, the W-3 is compliance. Basically, you file the W-3 and report that to the IRS. Then the W-2 is what you give to the employee. But you also send that to the IRS as well. So what happens is when you file the W-3, because most people don't do the W-3 and W-4 themselves, they mostly get a service to do it. So you would basically get a service. You type in the wages that you pay to the employee. Um, mm -hmm. You take you 
make sure to delineate that you did not have any social security or Medicare taken out of it because of the fact that the amount is not over the standard deduction and you already know that the child is a minor. So there's, they don't have to pay social security or Medicaid. So once you put all of this into the system, the W3 is a transmittal of the form. So basically it takes the information from the W2 and puts it on the W3. And if you use a service for it, they both do both of these forms at the same time and sends them to the IRS. And then you're allowed to print out a copy of the W3, a copy of the W2 for your records, and you give your child a copy of the W2 for their records. But gotcha. usually you're going to be keeping the records anyway. Gotcha. 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 Good stuff. Mojo said, what if you have been paying, employing your child all year, but you did, didn't did do any of this paperwork beforehand? Will that uh, be a problem? Start now. You can backdate. They're not going to know that you backdate, but you, but I'm pretty much sure if you get all the documentation in a row now, you'll be fine. Because if you, you figure if it's $122 a week, they pretty mm -hmm. much would work in maybe 20 hours a week. So you right. could just break it down like that, fill in the days and go back to the beginning of the year. Or if you're going to say it was a blitz, like tax season, you work the first six, six months of the year and then I break it down between then and then maybe the later in the later months, he's only shredding once a month because I'm not right. getting enough paper. So I'm breaking it down with that. Gotcha. Gotcha. But you can always stuff. go back and, and do the paperwork. You didn't hear that so, yeah. from me though. <laughs> We didn't say go do the paperwork, uh, but if you got paperwork <laughs> that's backdated, I don't think that'd be a problem. But yes, not yes. Saying go backdated. As long as it's not two, three, four years, if it's this year, because you're learning and you, right. you want to make Absolutely. sure you have all your ducks in a row. Absolutely. So Sylvia says, uh, wait a minute, before Sylvia, we had T. Robinson says, uh, how many kids can I employ and uh, how many hours can they actually work per week? Okay, so in my in my case, okay, I only have one because all of my other children are grown. Any child that you have that's between now, there's people who are trying to put two and three year olds in their business. I use seven to seventeen, but you only can use up to seventeen because after that they're considered an adult. Seven mm -hmm. to seventeen, whatever child. If you have ten kids and they between seven and seventeen, you can put them all in your business. They all can do something. Somebody can answer phones. Somebody can go back and do inquiries. Somebody can do filing. Somebody can make labels. Someone can um, put out, um, fill in stuff envelopes. There's plenty of jobs for all the kids to be able to do. Yeah. Now, if somebody had 10 kids, they lucky. Because I have yeah. all 10 kids working. And especially if they're teenagers and good with computers. Yes. So you got your social media marketers. Yes. And Exactly. Snapchat, kind of yeah. Somebody is in charge of a Facebook fan page. One is in charge of Twitter. One is in charge of Instagram. So, yeah, absolutely. And so then, the number of kids doesn't matter. More so age, 7 to 17. And now for the hours of work, I mm -hmm. would literally check the child labor laws in your state because mm -hmm. you just don't want to be saying you have a seven a seven year old working 40 hours a week while they also going to school, because that might be an issue. So I right. would check like, what are the lab child labor laws in your state? Because they have to have them because you know, they let kids work as teenagers. So they have to have some type of guideline of how many hours of work of they can work a week. Yeah. And, and then uh, speak on this, Yvette, because some people, your child is seven years old. You might not have them all the time. You might not be able to just write off the whole 63 but just write off what you can and, and, and keep in mind just good common sense. If your child only is with you on weekends, then obviously he can't work in your business uh, uh, 20 hours a week. Well, heck, he's only with you on the weekends. So you might not be able to get the whole 6300 per year and write off based on age and, and the amount you're paying them. But I let them work, do something. You may only get two thousand dollars in write off, but that two thousand is better than zero write off, right? Yes, that is exactly correct. So, yeah, in that scenario, if you only have your child on the weekend, every other weekend, make it one day. Maybe it's four hours a day, eight hours a week, whatever you de you decide to pay. But don't try to say now I have my child working 
eight hours over the weekend and I'm paying them $100 an hour. Right. Remember, you have to make sure that the work is reasonable as well as the pay. The pay has to be in line with the job. So like this job description that I got for my son, they actually pay $16 and 75 cents an hour. And I made sure to print that and just said, Hey, I'm giving him $10 an hour because he's not able to, um, it was part of the job description where he had to lift and, um, put the stuff into the dumpster. He's not able to do that yet. So I took $6 off an hour for that. Right. Right. Good deal. Good deal. Uh, Sylvia says, does the child, uh, the age matter? But I think we answered that if they're 18, they're considered adult Sylvia. So uh, basically, they are old enough. And, and, and I didn't tell you about this earlier, but, but uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Yvette. So you got an 18-year-old child, Sylvia. But so they don't qualify for this, but you have a home-based business. Well, guess what? That 18-year-old child can start their own lawn care service, and they can take care of your yard. You can pay them as a business contractor for taking care of your yard in their own business, still pay them and you still get to write that off because you can pay for uh, services if you're running a home-based business like yard service and landscaping. Is that correct, Yvette? That is correct. And now let's take it to a point where if you're in an office, now my son is going to be the receptionist at my job. Now, mm -hmm. although he's gonna be my employee, but you can also have your 18 year old work and you just pay them like a regular employee. But if yeah. you let's go back to the home based business, if mm -hmm. you have your child start their own, say they do window washing or they do a house cleaning business and you have them clean the area of your office as part of your home based business, you can still have that as a business write off. Right even though it's your own child. Right, so it's just like if you had a, a, a big office building, you would hire someone to come in at night to clean it. Well, this would be the same thing, but your yes. child starts their own business. You take them through the protocol of setting up their business so that you can pay them correctly and you hire them as a contract cleaner to come cleaning your office space. I love that, this good stuff. Uh, Robert says 6,300 per year per business. So if I have two LLCs, then is it uh, 12, six? And no, uh, no. deduction is 6,300 per no. person. Okay, y'all keep leaving out the $50. It's $6,350. Yeah, 6, y'all keep leaving that little 50 off. <laughs> Throw it in there. <laughs> right. But because the standard deduction is 6,350, if you pay them sixty three fifty in two businesses, anything over sixty three fifty, he's going to have to file a tax return. That is correct. But let me tell you, there's a way to get around that too. Now, if you had two, now I would not do this in two businesses. I would actually do it under one. Now you can increase the amount that you pay your child to $11,850 for 2017, but $5,550, I mean, $5,500 must go into an IRA. Mm. So that way you can still take and pay them as compensation, have that $11,850 as a write-off, as compensation, wages paid to your employee, but you're now putting a vehicle in place to put money away from them for when they retire and you're giving them money in the business. Wow. <laughs> now that's powerful. That's powerful. Well, it's one thing to take your children. And the reason that I love this strategy so much, because when you're paying your children, especially when they're small, it introduces you as the parent to be able to start talking financial concepts, financial strategies, tithing giving savings investing you start the process of teaching them financial literacy at a young age but now as a company i can hire my kid pay them the full 6350 pay them an additional five thousand that goes into a retirement vehicle or instrument for them and i still get to write off the whole eleven thousand fifty. 
11,850. Uh, 11, that's how that's max. Yes. All right. But cool. I love it. And I also want to put in okay, so every year for my tax clients, I always put out a challenge. Mm -hmm. So in line with what Ivy Stokes is want to do for my econ for the game for our conference, mm -hmm. I'm also telling my clients to do the same thing. I want them to buy one stock for their child, not them for their child. So again, because we're trying to build future black billionaires, mm -hmm. I want them to get into the concept that anything that they consume, mm -hmm. wear, go to, visit, or eat, they should own a part of it. So right. with my son, I started it last year. He wanted this iPad. He asked me for an iPad for two years. Last year, I gave him an iPad and an and a Apple stock. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. year, he's going to go to Disney World for his birthday. I'm going to mm -hmm. give him a Disney stock because right. I want him to get into the concept of knowing everything that I put my hand on, I need to have a piece of that. Can own that. Absolutely. Good stuff. Good stuff. Um, Brandon says, can you use this same system for other relatives or family members that not your children? No, for your children. That's okay. that's the that's the key. It has to be your child. It could be a stepchild. It could be an adopted child, but someone who is considered your child, right. not a cousin. Mm -hmm. Right. And you can pay wages to somebody else, but there's a different process for that. Yes. Right. They, if you did it for someone else, it's basically like you're paying them wages as a, a regular employee. Regular employee. Well, what about contracting if they just contracted that person who has their own business? I, um, are we talking about just children? I, I wouldn't, not a 1099. You never right. want to give any child a 1099 because okay. one thing about 1099s, it triggers that you have to file a tax return and pay taxes. Gotcha. And gotcha. I had a couple of business owners get in trouble with that. They got some bad advice and they, they, they wrote off the 6,300 last year, but they mm -hmm. gave 1099s to their kids. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Got you. So no kids 1099, but if you're talking about other family members who are adults uh, and you don't want to do uh, unemployment tax and that kind of stuff to pay them uh, in your business, then you can 1099 them, but not if they're kids. Good stuff, Yvette. Appreciate that. Uh, let's see. We got a couple more questions and then we're going to get to some special offers that we have for you guys as well. Um, also, does it matter if that older child is working somewhere else, too? Oh, this is a good one. This is a good one. So the older child has another job, but you also want to pay them in your business as well. How does that work? So, again, for you, $6,350 would be deductible as wages in your business. But if they made more than that and you did not put it into an IRA, then they're going to have to pay taxes on that money. So what you could probably do is say, OK, for me, you're going to be exempt. But for the job that they're working on the outside, they can file their W-4 and just put like single and zero to offset any wages. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, yeah, it, it's still standard deduction. It's still sixty three fifty. Don't matter if the, where the income comes from. If they work for you, if they work for ten other people, the, they make sixty three hundred fifty dollars and, and one cent. Now they don't have to file a return yeah. because they yeah. make over the standard deduction, right? Good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, Says thank you. I would definitely be hiring my fourteen year old and fifteen year old. Sounds good. That's what I want to hear. Says yes. does now have to be a dependent on your tax return. Like, can the dad write off the child wages even if he doesn't claim him on his as a dependent on his return? Good question. Did you I'm get that? Gonna, I'm going to get back to you on that one because some people say yes and some people say no. And the IRS says yes and the IRS says no. Whoa. Yes. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. So we'll answer that one offline. I was from yes. Mojo. So we'll, we'll, we'll deal with that one offline. Uh, and if you guys got some questions, if you guys are interested in that answer, let me know and, and we'll 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 make a way to get that answer. Uh, it says and the IRA is tax deferred. Right. Uh, now you get something else. But yes, it is. Tax yes. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, and then T. Robinson says, will the webinar be available later on YouTube? Not on YouTube, but you'll get an email tomorrow at about 9 a.m. that says you can watch the replay. It says, a nephew who I am the legal guardian of should be considered the same as my child, correct? Yes. Yes, because you're a legal guardian. Yes, yes you are the legal says, guardian and you have paperwork that substantiates that. Yep. And then last question, are you paying your shredder specialist via check to track the salary paid out? Always, right? Record keeping? Um, I actually utilize a payroll service. Right. Only because I don't want to fill out the W-4 and give the W-2. And because I also like third party verification. So basically I use a service and it only costs me like six dollars is thirty four dollars a month, which is a tax write off. Right. I only have that one employee that's going through that service. So it's twenty nine dollars per per employee plus six dollars for them to do the direct deposit. And he has his own little account savings account where the money goes to and, and he's fine. Good. But let's talk about if they don't have or don't elect to use a service, they do need to check for paper trail, right? Yes. And the and the funds should come from your business account. Yeah. Yes. Business account. Business account. All right. Good deal. Good deal. So Yvette, let's talk about the special offers that you want to provide for them today. Okay. So for being on this call tonight, we already talked about the giveaways. I'm going to make sure that I package that up so um, you will be able to get that tomorrow when the replay is released so you can have the forms because maybe you'll be able to walk, have the forms with you while you're watching the replay. But mm -hmm. I'm going to also be offering business credit training. It's going to be a two-day course on Friday and Saturday, December 1st and 2nd, 2017. It's going to be two hours each class for a total of four hours in business credit training. So just to give a breakdown, because two hours is a long time, but the first class, I'm definitely going to review the benefits of becoming an LLC and the LLC operating agreement, because I just think that's important to have in case anyone asks you for documentation, you have it. I and need then. Yes. And then we're going to set up the business in Dun and Bradstreet and get the Dun number. So that'll be the first, very first class because the LLC agreement is customized per person that's in the group. And since it'll be a group of people, I may ask you, we will have homework. So I'm going to be giving you the operating agreement. I'm going to be telling you to send it back to me so I can see it and review it before we go to the next class on Saturday. And then we're going to set up the business in Dun and Bradstreet, fill out your profile and then get your Dunn's number. So the second class, we're going to set up three starter accounts for business credit. Now, this is going to be set up underneath your EIN number, employee identification number or a AKA tax ID. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to set up three starter accounts. And then what I'm going to do is just go over the process of how you're gonna build business credit. Because most people wanna to try to go out and get business credit cards and you may not be eligible for them because if the credit card says you need to have five active accounts, but you only got three, they're gonna deny you. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna talk about how you can actually in the state of Georgia get a free business um, account. And this bank also allows you to you secure funds to get business loans. So we're going to talk about that as well. So that way you can have business loans underneath your EIN number, tax ID number, and then multiply that to um, quote um, Crank Lucas video to a million. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that right. video. The video is awesome. Yeah, that's good stuff. Good stuff. Okay, so. Awesome. Of course, everybody going to want to know how much this costs. Yes. So there is a very special for anyone that's on this call that's in my econ, that's part of Monetize My Life Academy, or is my client. Cool. If you want to know what that special price is, what are we going to do? We're going to tell them the price or are you going to um, tell them the inbox us and we'll tell them the price? 
yeah, if, if you guys are already connected to us in some sort of way, you're already on one of our teams or something like that connected, just inbox us. We'll get you the special price for that and then the special uh, PayPal link for that. Uh, just go ahead with the uh, those who uh, may be on the call, maybe not have a business or maybe just not connected with us and getting this kind of information. If they partner with you in my econ tonight for thirty five dollars to start and thirty five dollars per month, you're going to allow them in this class for sixty two dollars. Is that correct? That is correct. So that is for brand new members of my econ, whether you reach out to me or any member on my team and you join before the 27th, brand new, you can get this class for $62. Now, then I have early registration. I'm cutting the early registration off on Monday, November 27th at 11.59 p.m. That is the end of what we call Cyber Monday. And then the class will be $97 for early registration. And then if we have anyone that's after that date, the class will be one hundred and forty seven dollars. So that's just to basically motivate you to register early. Gotcha. Gotcha. So let's just recap, guys. If you have not already partnered with us in some sort of way, you join my econ before uh, the class uh, November 27th, then you will be able to get the special class price of sixty two dollars. And of course, we can verify if you have joined my econ. If you're already a part of my econ, Monetize My Life Academy or Connected as one of Yvette's clients already, uh, then you get the special discount price. Uh, early bird registration for those who are, don't want any part of my econ, you already have your own business, you just wanna get set up uh, in the business credit class, then it's just $97 for you one time before November 27th, and you get in the class uh, for the first and the second. After November 27th, it's gonna cost you 147 to get in the class, you might as well get in now, uh, so that you can uh, save you uh, 50 bucks. Uh, but I want to talk about this really quickly, Yvette, because sometimes people uh, don't really realize the importance of setting up business credit now, even if they're not kind of in position to really want to start using business credit. Talk about how you were able to set up business credit using these strategies a whole year and something before you even open your store. Yes. Now, and this is going now. I have had business credit since 2005. So it's been a long time. And it was before, like before when they wanted all type of documentation for you to get business credit. But this is what, this is exactly what I did. I got my LLC. I got it set up. I already had an office that I was doing taxes out of, but I used that address as my business address, even though it was seasonal. I took my tax ID and I applied for starter accounts. So what I did was I kind of like did some, some preliminary research. I looked at different um, companies that I figured would be ones that were more pliable to give me credit, even though I was brand new having credit. Mm -hmm. So I went and applied for these accounts and then I started ordering and paying early. Now, later on, I found out that I didn't know what my Dun & Bradstreet number was, but this stuff was being reported to them. And then from Dun & Bradstreet, you get what is called a Paydex score. And you wanna have your Paydex score to be 80 or higher. And what I found out by the fact that I was ordering off supplies and paying it early, I was actually getting a leg up because Dun & Bradstreet likes when you pay your vendors early, because again, 50% of business credit is how you pay. That's all they really care about is how are you paying the vendors who are giving you credit. Mm -hmm. So after I did that for a couple of years, um, I found out about, cause in my personal credit, I was working on personal credit and I found out I could get a secured personal loan. I went to the bank and I said, well, can I do the same thing for my business? Can I give you some money and get a secured business loan under my EIN number? And they said, yes. So I gave them $5,000, took mm -hmm. money out of my savings, put it into my business and just left it there. Took the funds out and was really like the payments I was making was actually their money. I was just giving it back to them. With the same money. Yeah. Giving them the same money back. Then once I paid it back, 
and I, they took the secure part off. Then I had a regular loan. So then I took that money and said, okay, I'm going to take and do it again and ask for 10,000. Now I had a 10,000 unsecured loan and I just started doing it again. And I just doubled up and I try to do this like every two years where I just started steadily building the credit where like now I have like an open line and it's almost like a hundred thousand. Wow. And I just so kept good. doing it every two years. I just kept paying the money back. Even if I used them, I just kept paying the money back because all you're doing is circulating the money back to them that they gave you. That's the key. You have to give them back the same money that you, that they gave you. Don't spin it. Just keep circulating, it, circulating it back to them. Because right. what you're so, doing is showing that you are able to handle money and pay it on time. And pay it on time. So, guys, click on the link. If you are going to sign up in my econ, click on the offer that's to the right of the screen and just bookmark that page because I'm going to take this offer down and put the other offer up. So just click uh, on that link now and bookmark that page. This is for those who are going to join Ebet in my econ. You get the special discount on the class. You get the My Econ for $34.95. Then you get the class for $62. Uh, and then I'm going to take that one off. And then I'm also going to show you. Here is the link that you need to click on if you don't want the My Econ business, but you want to uh, use the business that you currently have. And just go ahead and register for the class for uh, $97. This is the link. Go ahead and hit this link. Uh, and then basically what you'll do is uh, just bookmark that page so you don't be distracted from the webinar tonight. Uh, so there's a $97 and the first one was a $67, $62 uh, in lieu of you joining the My Econ team. So uh, Yvette, that was flat out amazing. Uh, I learned something new as I do every time you start talking. Uh, so that's good stuff. Uh, and I think we've answered everybody's question is now it's a matter of what do you guys want to do? You can literally start to uh, become a partner with uh, Yvette uh, and my econ. That's your own financial success uh, uh, membership. And they and she will teach you all the other stuff about building wealth, not just paying your children. But there's a lot of other stuff that we do. There's uh, personal credit uh, through the smart money system that comes with that thirty four ninety five. There is uh, uh, identity theft protection. There is a free and discount legal service. There's a bunch of other stuff that comes along with the uh, uh, the $34.95 as well, as well as your own business. Some of you guys may be saying, I want to pay my kids, but I, I really don't have a business. Well, mm -hmm. partner with Yvette and my econ and you have a business. Now you have a reason to pay your kids, right? So that's what that thing is all about. Super, super uh, uh, pleased that uh, you were able to give us some of your time. Uh, we are right at nine o'clock. We'll do one or two more questions. If anybody got a question that they did not uh, answer or ask or uh, get answered or ask, let's do that real quick. Um, let's see. Let's see. Rob says, thank you. Uh, I got, <laughs> I did get my homework done. All right. Good deal. <laughs> Is there anybody else? And then one, we'll do one or two more questions and then we'll close out. I want to honor your time, but I also want to give you your full hour since we started a little bit late. And you can't see me on, on camera, man. I don't know what happened. My, my computer today went through uh, about 75 minutes of updates today. And when I try to access my camera, it just wasn't. So anybody else, any questions before we get out? Oh, All right. I think you did a wonderful job and I think you've answered everybody's question. So, again, uh, if you uh, want to see this again, you will get an email notification of the replay. It says you did an uh, update uh, <laughs> without the tech. <laughs> <I'll say. laughs> um, yeah, see, yeah, that might not uh, be good now. Yeah, yes, you are. Uh, great to so appreciate that. One last question. Go ahead, Myra. One last question. Mm -hmm. We got a minute. We'll give her a second to type that in. But mm -hmm. uh, my econ is, is flat out awesome, guys. So uh, if you want to partner with Yvette or anybody on the team at my econ, uh, then get the $62 class. All you have to do is let us know who your upline is. We'll then uh, mm -hmm. see the 
date that you joined and then get you the discount based on whether you joined at the right time. Uh, you just have to update the drivers. Uh, oh, okay. okay. What? So she's talking to me about the drivers for my camera. No, so but Myra said, did you, oh, the, did you say that after we take the class, we would finish with business accounts? Yes, you're gonna have three starter accounts, three. Yes, yes. And a hookup to take and get business funding through a bank. Yeah. That I'm partnered with for the class. Good stuff. Good stuff. So, yes, you have three open trade lines under your business yep. name. Uh, and then she's going to train you on how to get other trade lines uh, when you're ready for that. And then how to get the hookup at the bank. Uh, and then get, uh, for, just for Myra, because she already has a Dunn's number. We'll just again, we're going to go through the profile. So then that will give her a chance to look at her profile and make sure that the information that they have that's connected to the Dunn's number that she has is correct. And all of this stuff is free. So a lot of times Dunn and Bradstreet try to get you to pay for things. But everything that we're going to be doing in the class is going to be free. Gotcha. Gotcha. Good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, uh, yes, I have uh, it, but I don't. Yeah, she may she may need some help going through her profile. And there's some things, there's some tricks to your profile and to, to make it hit a little bit better, make it pop. Uh, good, good, good deal. So with that, guys, I'm going to release Miss Yvette because I'm central time. It's just nine o'clock here. It's 10 o'clock on the East Coast. So uh, I appreciate each and every one of you guys for, for coming out. Hopefully you guys learned something. I know I certainly did. I, again, as I always do when Yvette starts to see, says, I'm already with my econ, so how do I register for the class again? If you're already a my econer, then we actually have a special price for you. Inbox me and I will get you the uh, special price and the link so that you can purchase that class. Cool, cool. So everybody who's in my econ, inbox me, who's your upline? And once we verify that, we will shoot you over the special link. Sylvia, is it related to uh, business finances? Oh, that's you asking, Sylvia. All right. So, I mean, you can stay on and keep messaging people if you want. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was, I was answering the question because there was the only one that's left. All right. All right. Uh, what does it uh, uh, does not specific to the to the banking? Uh, that was the answer to Sylvia's question that is okay. basically for business finance and they like to have sometimes when a business is requesting information from you, they may ask, what is your Dun & Bradstreet number? Because again, those reports are hmm. open to the public so they can find out what you're doing and how you're paying. Mostly the, for Dun & Bradstreet, they want to know how are you paying your other creditors? Yeah. Yeah. Good deal. Good deal. Well, I appreciate you, Yvette, so much. Uh, we'll make this available for the replay. And those who uh, missed it, they will get an email notification tomorrow that it's available for replay. So I am H. Cortez. She is Yvette Divez, the people's tax accountant. Hashtag tax deductible lifestyle. It is official. So uh, I don't have Cortez info. So can I inbox Yvette or uh, yeah, I'm Cortez Springer on Facebook. So if you want to inbox me or you can inbox Yvette as well uh, for the special price. All right. So until we talk to you guys next time, I want you to get your money up because you absolutely can do it. But more importantly, you deserve it. Peace out, y'all.